Hi guys, it's Helping Hands here again, and I'm going to bring you your sixth tip of the week. This time, we are going to be talking about game awareness. Now, this involves kind of the science of deduction here, where you have got to preempt your opponent and use the knowledge of what you of what you can see on the map and what what territories are connected in order to predict what your opponent can build and what they can't build and where his units may be or may not be. So, for instance, let's just speed this. this uh, here's a replay we've got of myself playing against uh, Captain S. Price. So we take the uh, Fog of War off here. So first of all, immediately, right, so if I can go Fog of War on for myself over here, uh, I can tell that he has not sent a single unit to the northern side of the map. Because if we look on the uh, look on the minimap, this sector is not flashing red. Neither is this one, and it's very unlikely that this one over here is going to be flash flashing red if he hasn't connected this one up. So I can assume that he sent most of his his, his units to start with to the uh, to the south. He's capping the south sector. So, and if I now go on to his perspective, I am definitely right. We can see that he's gone south. All of his units are in the south because there's no unit in the north because there's no captain uh, flashing captain uh, capping sector. So now also I heard glass break. Oh, he he could have heard glass break as well. So he would know that you know if he was paying careful careful attention, he would know that I'd have jumped in a building. And you can tell the building which um, I've jumped in by you know by the glass breaking because it's even through the fog of war that you can see the glass break on on buildings. But this will only happen the first time a unit jumps in a building because then after the glass doesn't magically come you know. Uh, you know, repair itself once the units have jumped out. It only works the first time you jump into a building. Right, so if I take the fog of war off again. The yeah, fog of war is on. Okay, so I saw this uh, this, sec this sector flashing red, so I'm now going up to engage. Easy counter here. So now I know that I've treated his first engineer squad, and he's probably only got one. So if we go back to the his perspective, we can see yes, he's only got one engineer, um, and I know I have a feeling that he might be going, um, you know, like a, a maxim or like some kind of tier one, tier two to start with a unit from that building because of the amount of territory that he's kept. If he was going conscript spam. Um, it would have been very likely that he he would have been attacking the north as well. So now if I go back to my perspective, okay. I know that he's attacking me with a conscript squad here, so um, and that means uh, so you know, he's, he's two of his units have now engaged, tried to engage me in the north. So he, that means there's less units down in the south to to defend against these two grenadiers, which are now encroaching on his territory. Uh, I haven't seen any movement. Um, interesting enough, it, it seems like he's pulled back his units here because they're not pushing forward to capture these territories. So he might. It looks like he might have been pulling his units back to counter this northern attack because I've obviously, you know, aggressed his pioneers capping this sector. So it looks like he's trying to reinforce his side up here. So if we now put on the um, take the fog of war off, he is doing that. See, because he's sent his maximum north. So therefore, he's got hardly any units here in, in the south to, to protect it. And that's, the, that's that's true. He's only got one conscript there, which is, will not be able to counter these two. Um, these two grins. And also the fact that I've now seen he's got a Maxim makes me think he may have um, you know, a Maxim covering this, this sector down here, which is, you know, it could be possible. So that's why I'm being uh, fairly cautious with these grenadiers, because I don't want to rush in there, try and capture one of these sectors and get suppressed by a Maxim straight away. So we continue. So he's decided not to attack there. So now I've come up here. I've noticed he's got one conscript hit squad here, so I can easily cap this tech. So I can see there's no Maxim here just yet. I think I've just seen it then, but then I'm going to pull away out of the line of fire there. Um, okay, so now let's look at the map territory. We can see. Right, I've got most of the map. Uh, he's still got one of his fuel sectors capped. So if we look here, he's still got this one capped, and I've got mine capped. So we've both got roughly about the same amount of fuel income. I'm, I'm probably having a slightly better, better income because I've got more territory, you know, these normal territory strategic points. And um, so yeah, I know he's now got two conscript squads because there's one here, and there's one, and there was one that I engaged in the north. Uh, I don't know if he's got two maxims yet because uh, he could have uh, he could have had one here or one over there. Um, 
but yeah, it would it, it's, it's not possible for that conscript squad that appeared in the north then earlier to have gone all the way down here to engage this squad in the uh, in that amount of time. So I definitely know he's got two conscript squads, one engineer, and at least one maximum squad. And now I know that he's now got the his engineer that he was originally retreated has now returned to the north. Um, let's see if I can tell. If I turn the fog back on for myself, I can tell that he's captured the, the middle sector here. And now I know that he's got a third con. No, that looks like it's the second, the original conscript because it's got a little bit of health taken off it. So there we go. I know that's his. That was the original conscript that engaged because that is definitely possible for that con to get over there in that amount of time. And it's also had that initial fight over here because so, it's lost a bit of health. So I know that that's still the original conscript squad. So he's still got two cons. Okay, so let's keep speeding this up because. So I've uh, vetted this mortar up using my elite troops ability from uh, the, yeah from troop training from the uh, commander. So I know he's captain capturing this sector. So then I can just do a random uh, do a rough barrage around this area and hope to kill some units. So I fast forward it. There goes the barrage. And one of those shells do take off two men of that conscript squad. So the, you know that was a good move there. Um, okay, let's keep going. Right now, let's just go. To, so I know he's got no. He's got two cons, about one maximum or so, and one engineer. He's definitely got enough manpower to make more units. So that makes that makes me think, why haven't I seen any more units? Right? That makes me think, well, maybe he's teched up. Maybe he's done. You know, maybe he's gone to tier three. Maybe I'm, you know, should expect an early scout car or something. So let's go to price and let's see if he has done that. No, he hasn't done that. He's decided to get himself a mortar out. So as soon as I see this mortar out, I know that he's continued in his tier, you know, his his early game tech progression. So I, I know he hasn't he hasn't uh, decided to tech up yet. So now I've seen that his mortar now because now uh, my grin passed through here. I saw his mortar. Now I know he's gone. He's got a mortar squad as well. So like I just said, yeah, I know he's continued with that early game progression. So let's go back to my perspective again. Okay, I've now seen him. He's captured something. You know, this sector here up here was flashing. I've lost. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't tell what unit was grabbing that, but I now know that um, that he was he was capturing that sector. It could be a conscript squad because his it can't be his engineer squad because his engineer squad's here. I know, for a fact, I know it's there because I can see it. So I know definitely know it's, it's not his engineer squad capping the north, and it can't it can't on earth be his maximum squad because his maximum squad is already down here. So it has to be a conscript squad. So with that science of deduction, if I now click play. And wait, turn the fuck of war off. It's the conscript squad. So there we go. We can now, you know, by using this, you know, that deduction ability, we can now tell where his units are at. So now I know that, all right, he's gone, he's still gone, you know, in this heavy infantry build. And now he's gone to the shock squad. So I now know that he's not thinking of going a t quick tier three or something or saving up like that. So, uh, that you know, that'll leave me to, you know, take my way and to tier two. So let's keep going. Let's just talk about back on. So you know, I can still tell that this is this is going to be a conscript squad in the north here because this was the unit that capped that sector. So I know that's a con up there. Um, let's turn the forward back on. It's another conscript squad there. Let's just have a quick look over to Price's side to see how many. Con he's, he's got two cons still. He's now made himself a second engineer, but I don't know if I can if I, if I can tell that he's got two yet. Or I probably could. Because as soon as I see that one's got no striper vet, I can tell that he's got two engineers with flamethrowers. Because one does have a striper vet, so that's another thing you're going to got to know for. You can tell by how many units of a certain type he's got by keeping track of the veterancy that they have. So, you know, like for in this instance, Price has got two en flamethrower uh, engineers. One's got striper vet, one doesn't. So then I know, all right, he's got two. When I see one without a striper vet. Okay, so let's continue here. For the war off, I now know he's retreated his shock squad, so that's not going to be in the fight for a bit more. I now know that he's got two cons in the north, so one's up here, one's down here. And also his maxim is in the south, so I don't have to worry about that in the north. So I can rush in here with my units without fear of being suppressed. Okay. 
Although I still haven't seen any sign of anything fuel from him. There's an, a, a, that's right. So I now know where his mortar is. He's now retreated that. So that's out of the way. Here's where I notice he's got two flamethrowers. So Price is probably thinking, uh, right, Hans has now got himself, you know, he's got. He's, he's seen that I've got the scout car up now. So he knows that I've gone tier two. He knows that for a fact because he's seen the scout car. Um, but so he now thinks, all right, I need some AT, something to counter that. So he's probably now been hitting a Ziz gun. And as we can see in here, we can now tell that he's got a Ziz gun. Um, also, we got, you know, through game awareness, we've got to realize, you know, how long has our opponent had, like, the fuel sectors for, the munitions for, for instance, okay? So, let's look at the uh, the map for a second, take the fog of war off. We can tell that I have got the fuel, I have had this fuel sector for the majority of the game. I've had quite a bit of fuel, whereas I have been able to disconnect his one, uh, like, once or maybe twice. He's done, he's, done this, he's done it for me for once, but I managed to grab it back fairly quickly. Um, also, like, for, so therefore, I know... You know, we both had a quite a bit of quite a lot of fuel, so we both could tech up to tier three because we both had our you know one fuel each. I mean, if I had both fuel sectors, then I could quickly maybe go tier four. Price may realise that and think, oh, oh damn, I need to get quite a lot of AT because he's got a lot of fuel. Uh, the same same can be said for munition sectors as well. So you can tell, right, if I've got like I had this in this middle uh, sector for quite a while, so I've had a lot of munitions income. So and as you can tell, you know I've got a Gren here with an MG42 upgrade, another one over here, Pioneers with an upgrade. I think I've put a Teller down here. Um, let's just quickly have a look. No, I don't yet, yeah, but I I know through this game I do put one down. But yeah, what and you know for instance, if you can tell that your opponent has you know, text like he used his munitions, so you can tell that I've put my munitions that I've had into MG43s, uh, sorry, MG42s. Um, you can tell that you know I haven't, you know, I haven't got enough munitions to say upgrade a flame a half track, or you know, put down more mines, for instance. So you know, you, you can tell that you know you only have a certain amount of munitions to spend in the early game. You know, roughly around about 120 within, within the first five minutes or so, and you can tell you know by what units have been upgraded. Uh, or or haven't been upgraded, for instance. So if you see no upgrades on any of your you know, any of your opponent's grenadiers, or if you don't see any molotovs being thrown, or if you don't see um, you know, PTRS or PPSHs, you can tell that he's probably set, spent a lot of munitions on mines, or uh, you know put some mines down. You know he's got some you know for instance if he's Germans he's probably got some tellers down. Uh, so yeah, you got you got to think about that those kinds of things as well. So let's continue. <laughs> So okay. back on for me. So let's pause here again. Let's see what else I can tell from this. From now, looking at this ma uh, map. So I know he's got his two con. His only two con squads are here. Uh, down here, the, I know that his maximum squad is still in the south. So uh, although I I did know that his maximum squad was in the south, so I don't know why I'm getting engaging with a grenadier squad. Maybe I'm trying. You know, I'm. You know, it's difficult to to do to you know be able to process this every single time you know you're not you're not going to be uh, instantly amazing at trying to do this and i mean i'm still learning at trying to do game awareness myself like for instance i should have i should have noticed because the max i definitely knew maximum's capping here i don't know why i'm engaging engaging with the grenadier squad i probably should have sent this scout, scout card down to the bottom to deal with that because i know scout cards are great at killing support weapons like that so i don't know why i did that so i now in the north i know now i've, I've gotten rid of his um shock squad and so I probably should push up and grab that territory with my MG42. So yeah, and I know his two cons are here. I don't know where his mortar is at. Uh, I know his shock squad has been retreated off the field. So I've only, I think I've only really got to deal with two con squads here. Um, you know, that are attacking me at the moment. So if I just play again. Oh, and, oh, and also his flamethrower engineers. I know, I think I may have retreated one. It's still one one alive, so you know I've got to worry about these engineers. I don't know where they're at as well. And I know his mortar is that because it was firing on my unit, so I can I can, I can attack that with my uh, engineer. And also there's a unit there. 
Also, whenever you see engineers, you've got to be really careful with vehicles because, you know, once you lost, once you lost some territory in, in say, like a middle, middle ground area, you, uh, a decent player would, would think, all right, I've gained some territory. I want to make it really difficult for, for, their, for, um, for my opponent to come back and grab it off me. So this would be a prime time in order to plant mines. So especially, especially if he's got, so if I know he's got engineers that have just taken this territory, I'm going to be extra careful before I rush in my scout card because he might have a mine here, here anywhere you know he might you know because if i don't have line of sight of it i you know i don't know so that's the safest bet is to wait for my with my wait for my pioneer with sweepers to come out and uh help me push this territory also i now know that he's got a ziz gun out because it took a shot at my uh, uh, ac so i even though I, I don't think i saw it i know how much by how much damage it quickly took that it has to be a ziz gun so, and by the noise, you can tell, even if you don't see that, you can just tell by listening about by the noise and by how much damage your units have taken, um, you know, of what units, uh, you know, what enemy units are on the field. So I'm just going to pull that and repair it. So now that I know that I've got to pull back and repair this, it's, uh, it's, this has delayed my sweepers coming out and sweeping this area. So this is kind of a gamble you have to take sometimes, you know, if you, like, if you want to, you know, if you want to get your pioneers, uh, to be repairing rather than planting mines or taking up, it's a risk you have to take, and you know, it's, it can either pay off or it can't pay off. Um, but most times, yeah, you know, you, you've got to quickly de decide on what to do there. So here, I've decided to take the risk and push forward, even um, you know, without those, you know, with those engineers the Soviet engineers being around there. Although I didn't really think they had planted enough. I only saw one squad around there and my AC had line of sight of that squad behind the house most of the time. So it was very unlikely here you had enough time to plant a mine. So that's why I took the gamble and pushed in there. So now I know his two his flame engineers are here. That means a con or a shock squad must be in the north. I don't know if he's got two of those. I haven't seen his shock squad in a while. And here is two. This is more in Zizka. So that ha I think that has to be a shock squad in the north, and it is a shock squad in the north. So there you go. That's where a shock squad's at. Okay, so let's see what we can tell from Price's perspective. He knows now that I've got myself a P4, and he's just lost a Maxim squad. So he's thinking, right, he's got he's he's got himself two Zis guns, and now he's bringing this Zis gun down to the center because he knows that I've got most of, I've got a P4 here. So he wants as much counter, you know, much AT as possible in order to, and he needs to defend his cutoff because this is all the territory he's had. That's why he's bringing this Zis gun down, which is the best thing that he can do at the moment because he needs to hold his cutoff. Without this cutoff, he's going to lose all of his territory over here, and he's not going to have any more fuel income. Look, he's only got seven more fuel income, but look, he's got a lot of fuel. And it looks like, um, and also by this, I can, I know that he's got a lot of fuel this game because he's had his fuel sector for a long time, right? A long, long time. But I haven't seen any tech. I've just seen his tier one, and you know, sorry, he's just his, his tier two tech with the, with one Maxim, a mortar, and two Ziz guns. So, and he's got two, two, two uh, cons. Two engineers. Well, he's got three engineers now, actually, and one shock squad. So I know that he's got a really heavy tier two early game, you know, infantry presence kind of support role. So that makes me think, right? If, if I haven't seen any tech from him from now, he's probably saving up for, a, a, you know, an, a, a call-in ability. It'd be that T thirty four eighty fives or um, a KV eight with shocks. Uh, sorry, KV eight or an IS two. So, and uh, I can kind of tell what Doctor Commander he's gone by what unit he's produced. So. He's gone shock squad, and there's only a, f uh, or so a couple of commanders that do have that. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but um, you know it's worth, very worthwhile trying to you know if you want to get really uh, you know in competitive into this you know you want to get better at this game, want to become one of the top tier players. It's very I would I would recommend trying to learn all of the all, you know every single unit each commander has because by by learning you know what you uh, what units your opponent uh, brings out into the field you can kind of tell which uh, doctrine he's gone for instance if you see guards and that 120 meter more you could tell that he's gone that that guards uh, commander with the t3485s at the end so you got to watch out for that and so you know with shocks i can i think that he's maybe because i know the shocks do come with kvk and is2 so he's probably going for that so i've got to watch out for, for that. And, that and this is why I've planted, uh, is the tellers there yet? I definitely plant some tellers there, but I try, but I, when, when I have time, I do plant some tellers around. Complete. 
So I want to hold this cutter for as long as I can. And so, really, that's as much as you really need to know. I mean, if you can tell that, that um, for, for game awareness, that is. I mean, if you if you can tell that his units are here, you know, I mean, um, Price can tell that my, my people is in the center. So it's obviously not going to be in the north or the south. So he can move his infantry units down, the, down here without being challenged. So it's all about, you know, realizing the obvious, which may not really... You know, which 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 when you when you come to think about think of it, it is actually obvious. But you you just need to think about it. I mean, you know, most players just play in the moment, right? They just think, oh god, I need to, I need my cutoff back. I need, you know, I need to grab my my territory back, and that's all they're thinking about, right? But you've got to realize, okay, if his the army's here, there's going to be nothing this side of the map. So you know, I'm going to go all the way. You know, he might say, all right. So I realise my army's all the way, most of my army's in the centre. It's cut off. He might think, all right, there's nothing, there's nothing in the north. Then there's hardly anything in the north. So I'm going to send most of my army there and, and wipe uh, and control the north. So it's all, you know, that's always a, a viable thing to do. And, and like I say, if my people was here, I've got nothing down here, you know, here to, uh, you know, to stop a flank coming through this side or here. If he knows all my forces are here, and you know, the same for all, all units really. If I've got my, you know, my, my, um, my mortars and stuff behind houses, you can tell. Uh, you can probably have a rifle grenade over them and such. So, yeah, I think that's all I can say about uh, game awareness. If you have anything of your own that you'd like to add that I, that I can't think of at the moment, um, please uh, put it in the comments section below. And, uh, yeah, I hope this helped. So, um, yeah. I uh, hope to see you next time, guys, and take care.